In part two of our series, we're going to look at G Pascal, which is another compiler suite available for the Commodore 64. I did need a CJM file to enable the accurate disk mode in order for this software to load. But once up and running, I was presented with a menu uh, where very quickly we can begin using the compiler tools. It takes a little bit of getting used to from a usability standpoint. There's a few nuances uh, to the dialect of Pascal also. Um, but apart from that, uh, there are several included programs um, that demonstrate the capabilities and really uh, are actually pretty impressive. So let's start by taking a look at the, um, some of the features in the menu system here. So we're going to begin uh, by going to the files menu and getting a listing from our disk by pressing C for catalog. Um, you can see there are several programs that are included on the disk. Um, G Pascal was actually developed by a person named Nick Gammon and Sue Gobbett, uh, hence the G for the name. Uh, and Nick actually was gracious enough to paste uh, or, or publish the disk file um, on his website, um, which is really very nice. So I was able to get a copy of it there. Well, let's begin by loading out uh, the demo file from the disk. Uh, it's going to take just a second to load. I happen to know that there is a bug in the demo. Um, I don't know if this is an issue for real hardware, but there is a, a, a couple of lines that actually break this demo on the C64 Mini. Uh, so I'm going to edit those files first, which is a good opportunity for you to see how you would use the editor built into G Pascal. So our file is continuing to load. Uh, once it loads, we'll press E uh, for edit. Um, and as we get into the editor screen, um, it's not as nice as Kai and Pascal in terms of having a full screen editor. But once you get the hang of it, it's actually pretty easy to use. Pressing H gives you the help commands. Um, L lets you list. I happen to know that the problem we're looking for lies between lines 460, uh, 440 and 460. And what you'll see, you'll see line 443 and 448 both have a flash border um, command. So typing M in the command, and here I'm going to say 443, uh, will now load that file. And it can let me type over it, but what I can also do is actually just press the up arrow. I'll press insert put in a comment. I'm just going to comment this out. It doesn't take a lot to work around this particular uh, bug. So I'm just going to comment this one out. I'm going to hit enter so I don't erase line uh, 444. Uh, we'll list it again just so you can see um, that the line has changed and you see it is now comment and line 444 is intact. But let's also modify line 448 with the same exact fix. Uh, we're going to insert our uh, comment. Go ahead and complete this, hit enter, okay. And now um, look at the help. Uh, we actually don't have to save this. It's actually automatic with uh, G Pascal. It automatically saves everything. Nice thing here is I can actually type S and do a quick syntax check. Uh, this will verify the file and let me know if there's any uh, errors that need to be corrected before. It tells me here that there are no errors. Compile has been finished. Um, I can now uh, actually, since it's compiled, uh, it does actually wants me to compile it again. So let me go ahead and compile it. And now we'll run this demo once it's completed. And you can take a quick look at the demo that ships. Um, and off the bat, you'll see here it's, it's switched to a high res mode. You see a sprite little bat going across the screen. Um, once it uh, finishes, it's going to go to the next screen. And this block actually here, you see the words G Pascal being drawn out. This is actually where it froze. Uh, previously. So commenting out those lines um, corrected the issue. Um, and this is the demo that comes with G Pascal. Uh, so it really just shows the capabilities of this particular uh, compiler. Um, and here's a little load runner looking guy running across the screen. Um, but it shows the abilities here. I think there's also some sound also. Uh, it's going to come on here in just a second um, after the sprites demo. So I won't run through this whole demo. It's something you can certainly run on your own as you, uh, as you like. And I've hit the run stop key. You'll notice it breaks and puts me back to the uh, compiler screen. So let's take another quick look at the uh, file which I've written, uh, the same one that we used in Cayenne Pascal, the demo for RetroAxis. Uh, we'll type catalog here. We'll see in the file listing. 
that's loading. I've got a file here called RetroAx and also another file called RetroAxis. RetroAxis itself is the actual source code file. Go ahead and load that. Go into the editor list the file. We'll see it's almost the same as the one we did before, except we don't have uh, a type definition for string. And also one nuance of GPascal that I learned is it really has no string capability. So I actually have to iterate through the array on lines 11 um, in order to get it to spit out the text that I'm looking for. Anyway, that aside, we can go ahead and compile this. Uh, no errors, we'll run it, and sure enough, here's our demo. And there you go, time to subscribe, press enter, uh, run is finished, press any key.